Hi guys, it's Blackie. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, today we're going to talk about getting ready for winter. And November 22nd here in my south was the first time it was cold enough to have a fire in the fireplace. I used the fireplace in order to heat up my home during the winter. Keep the overall core temperature about right. Keep the wood, the wood, tongue tied. Keep the walls warm. You don't have to use so much of the central heat and air unit. So I'll kick that off and I'll fire up my fireplace and for several hours, you know, from just before supper, through supper, and then a couple hours after supper till almost bedtime, I keep a fire going in the fireplace. And that, using fans, I circulate that heat to warm the core of the house. And then I let that go out and let the central heat and air do the nighttime warming. But by adding in this outside influence, I keep my cost down. I keep my core bill down for the thing. So what we're going to talk about today is because in an earlier video I had talked about last year about how to pick your firewood and how to season it. Well, that's what I've done now and I've got my firewood stack set up. But my day-to-day -day, as I come out and for a little exercise, I have a wood lot as part of my yard. It's a lot of uh, oaks and things like that. I gather limbs. Now, what we're going for is a bucket of tinder. This tinder needs to be something that when I bend it, it snaps clean. Like that. That's dry enough. If I bend it and it doesn't snap or I have to corkscrew it off, that's still got a moisture content on it and it's a little too much. And therefore it won't burn clean. This is what I'm going to create at the beginning of the fire to build my fire with. I will put two base logs into the fire pit and then between them I will put my starter, whatever I'm going to use, be it tinder, be it shavings, be it whatever, like I said. And on top of that I use this, just like I was going to build a campfire. And I want it dry. I want it to get going, set up the heat quickly to get those logs going. Because as soon as I can transition from my tinder over to my fuel wood, the better. I also want my stuff, like I said, this tinder needs to just snap. And I take handfuls of it and put it in that bucket. Now, make sure that you snap it down fairly clean. Remember that game that Grandma and Grandpa used to make you do called picking up sticks in the yard? For those of you who grew up in the South, this was the reason. This was going to become fuel for the for the stove for starting fires, etc. And it should just snap clean in two. But these nubs like this sticking off, that puts a lot of difficulty because you're trying to slide this into the fire pit or into the wood stove or whatever and them nubs just cause all kinds of problems of hanging up and it's it's awkward you want it fairly clean sticks so you snap them nubs off like that sorry for kicking the camera but like this right here that's coming off that would definitely tangle you up and I go along and I snap off all of them as close as I can to the stalk to the main trunk that goes into the bucket and then these pieces like this a little bitty nubs not such a big thing that two inch nub sticking off is go ahead and pop it off with your finger snap it down doesn't matter if you have a little crooked stick ever so often but having a set of gloves handy is good because if you get something that's just so many nubs you can't grab it by hand and do it and not get stuck or whatever that tells you you need gloves, and it also means that when I go to put it into the fireplace, it's going to foul up. Now notice, straighten that two-inch nub, and that two-inch nub don't want to bend. So that is where I want to snap it off. So that's the end. Same thing with this one. I don't mind that funny end out there. I just don't want it in the middle to, to screw me up when I go to put it in the fireplace. Because what you're going to do is you're going to create a nice pile of these sticks on top with your fine tender your bird's nest or whatever and get them burning then from this it'll transfer over to my fuel wood usually a bigger stick so as I'm doing this there will be as you notice in there a couple of bigger pieces mixed in these are usually the stalks that I've snapped down to that will give me a kindling to go from my tender 
from my fine tender to my tender to my kindling and then my fuel wood. Those step ups, even though I'm using a fireplace, is just the same technique and trick as if I was using a fire uh, a fireplace the same as a campfire. It's just in an enclosed space. So I want to build my fire the same way. I will have stacked up my firewood, and I have, so I have my bone dry. That was cut and dried two years ago. And so it is, it is fine. It will burn all the way down to just ashes. Then I have my green. That was cut last year or early this season, depending on the moisture content. But there's still a moisture content to it. And so that fine dry wood, it's going to burn down to ashes, not leaving coals. That, that seasoned wood that's in between, that's going to generate coals to keep a longer burning fire, okay? And this fine stuff is to begin the fire. I will only use like a third of that bucket to get going. It will transfer then over to my kindling. That will get the fire to my fuel wood. Once I'm in fuel wood, this bucket goes away. It goes back to the corner and leaves just the wood. That's when I get my fire laid, I get it going. I know it's gonna burn nice and hot. I'm generating a big heat bubble in the house. I'm wanting to generate, and I've got a few little fans, one up on the mantel and one to the side, circulate that heat throughout my home and get it going, okay? Once that dry wood has burned down, I'll throw two or three pieces of that green wood on there. That'll keep coals, see? It's not truly green, it's one, one season. And so it's got a moisture content to it. Now by putting it onto a bed of hot, dry wood, it doesn't generate that much smoke. In fact, I should not have hardly any smoke. And from that super dry, I don't get hardly any at all. In fact, I come out and I look up at my chimney and there's hardly anything coming out. Smoke coming out of the chimney is usually steam and unburned gases and that causes your flu to get full of creosote and therefore be a fire danger. I sweep my chimney every season and I use a creosote log. Now I burned my first fire on the 22nd. I have burned a fire since then. It's warmed up, but Thanksgiving it's going to turn into rainy here and the temperature is going to drop and they're expecting Friday morning it'll probably be 30. So Thanksgiving night we'll have a nice cheery fire going and I will burn that creosote log that is designed to prevent chimney fires. That'll be the second or third. If you read on the directions, it'll tell you, don't use it for the first fire, use it like the third or fourth. I am therefore on my fourth fire and therefore it'd be time to burn it. So Thanksgiving night, me and my wife will sit by the fire. We'll have supper in front of the fire. We've got a separate table we can move over in front of the fireplace. And for our Thanksgiving, we'll be in front of a very bright, very welcome fire on a wet, cold day. And then as the temperature drops that night, we'll keep that fire going till about 11 when we're ready to go to bed and the fire will have burned down. I will stop putting that green on there and we'll have stopped putting any fresh wood on there past, say, 9.30 or 10 and just let it go all the way down to ashes. So when it's time to go to bed, I can close that flue. I have stopped the air loss and those warm walls will radiate heat back into the room for the rest of the night. That's the way you run a fireplace. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And very much heartfelt to all of you. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you and your family have a wonderful time. I hope we all find common ground. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.